Greetings. Yeah, this is really middle of the night stuff. I uh, don't know when you'll see it, hopefully early enough. Uh, I'm watching the meteor shower. So I, at the same time, I'm looking at, and I know people think that there's something, you know, strange with our education and our our whole thing and, and what it is if we go back to every place on earth where the Satanists rule there's a big obelisk like the Washington Monument the pyramid the uh, the Shiva Linga sorry but that's basically a symbol of of the satanic side of the Shiva thing. Shiva uh, has both aspects of creator and destroyer, and but is oftentimes referred to in the Shiva, Shiva Linga form as another phallic, obelisk, whatever. But it doesn't necessarily, you know, represent uh, just sex or an erect phallus, or, I mean, that, certainly that imagery is there. Um, but what it really more deeply symbolizes is the manipulation of the created world or to be creators ourselves to lift ourselves, right? In other words, Luciferianism wherever you see those the Knesset uh, the Vatican that's what ties it all together not one conspiracy or another and I don't know why I'm saying this right now I'm having a, to take myself, here, where the meteors are going about every, I'd say about every 15 to 20 to 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds, there's another meteor. I know, Dasha, you want to be out here with Mr. Eli and me. But I'm not with, come on. <laughs> She's still a little afraid of the outside, I think. No, nope, there goes another one. Okay. And I just figured, along with these, these meteors, I've got some heavy sh furniture, but I want to somehow bring this chair and I'm freaking my dogs out as I sit here. Dash, I know, look, I know you're freaked out, but this is a good spot to be. And uh, Mr. Eli, it's pretty quiet out here, isn't it, Mr. Eli? He stands guard at night. Anything moves, he's on it. So I'm looking about half the sky and I have a a very heavy chair, outdoor furniture that doesn't decay, but it has a little rocking thing, so it's nice. And as I look up there and I see the meteors streaking by, some more prominent than others, I ask the Lord, I say, Father, I need the truth. I don't think we've been getting the truth, and I, I've been saying that for a long time. I mean, I remember some things. How can the truth be in my memory then? So the truth is in my memory, but I have kind of an amnesia. I guess that's what we're dealing with. Anyway, a lot of these obelisks, they're not just dealing with life on earth. They're dealing with the journey after death somewhere. And, you know, from biblical training, we have this idea of, well, there's either heaven 
that up there, what I'm looking at right now, it's beautiful. It could just as easily be a sheet of paper with little pinholes in it, with light coming through, like Stanley Kubrick did on the set of 2001. Anyway, as I look up there, I say to the Lord, Father, you're in the heavens, and I need, we need, we need some answers. There's no point for me looking at a comedy video of Buzz Aldrin flip-flopping around on his story over and over again about the moon, and then he made slip-ups about the the obelisk being on Phobos, the moon, the Mars moon. Well, here we go with Mars. And how quickly we go from the moon to Mars and to Phobos, the potato-shaped moon, which, of course, is not spherical, and the obelisk that sits on it, much like the obelisk that sits here. And then he had a theory that, well, I guess we were Martians and then we came here in the form of the Egyptians. And, you know, the real story is, of course, there's a lot to all of it. I mean, I, I kind of think, in a way, there's obviously something on Mars, something on the moons, something on the moon things going on and the people oh there goes another beautiful meteor and the people are lied to for what reason father we have to go directly to the Lord today now if we look in Isaiah 14 which is a scripture I was just led to and I'm going to go ahead and what's beautiful is I can sit out here in the in the dark because there's no moon out there so we really have a great view of these of these meteors, which brought me out here at this hour. Uh, my Bible crashed. Thank you. Okay. Now let's see what it has to say. We'll start with one. That's fine. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place, and their house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give the rest, sorry, the rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from hard bondage, wherein thou were it was made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, <clears throat> How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Wow. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet and they break forth into singing. And I just finished to that section. That's as far as I'm going to go. Because this is speaking about the, the breaking of the obelisk. The collapse of that obelisk. Meaning the power. And now, as we go to Psalm 2 again. Yet again. And the reason we must go there. You know, I don't mind this in alphabetical order. Why do the heathen rage and people imagine a vain thing? 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And they say, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. I'm looking up there right now. The Lord shall have them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and vex them with his sore displeasure. Yes. Well, more meteor streak. As I look at the horizon, I realize that it's a set horizon. If I go up in an airplane, the horizon is still set at eye level, no matter how high I seem to go. I saw some footage of a rocket ship going up from the Earth. It was an amateur rocket ship out, out in the, like, you know, salt, salt, uh, salt Lake. And they launched it. They had a camera on that could see the horizon. And as the rocket went up, 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 it, as high as it would go, up into, uh, nearly into, you know, I mean, to, in, to where you should be able to see the Earth. Um, all you could really see was the horizon still at eye level, as high as the rocket went. And I know that, you know, I have people tell me, and I'm, I leave this open because, see, the Lord says he's there in the firmament called heaven, which heaven is a definition of that which is not this or up from this, there, outside this uh, contained thing that we call the earth. And somehow, there is a guardian, you can call it the, a plasma belt or whatever, that guards from that out there and a magnetosphere, which protects us too from um, radiation from the sun. Another meteor. So they're really about every minute, you know, not every minute, minute, and there goes, an, okay, so there's two right there. So here we are, folks. I'm looking at this firmament. I have a very good view of the stars. And I'm asking the Lord, Father, it's about time we got some answers. Because if there is something wrong with the information that we have, and if everything is a big lie, managed by the, uh, the greatest of all Satanists, the Freemasons, then what are we going to do? Well, the Freemasons are Luciferians, a.k.a. Satanists. <laughs> I told you at the very beginning, before this was published all around the Internet and YouTube, that where you see the obelisk, you have Satanists in control. The obelisk is a staff of power. that they. It's also an altar that they put there to establish and to say to the world and to the universe arrogantly, we have conquered this land and we have set ourselves above the Most High God. We will endeavor to go to the stars. We will endeavor to get out into, the, into heaven and to set our throne above the Most High and to better the Most High and to, through reason and technology and education, and enlightenment, we will rule over the stars and over all we survey. No, no, leave the frogs alone, uh, Dasha. That's just a, that's a, it's, those are desert frogs. Now stop, stop it. Sit down here. Sit down, sit down, come on, sit down. Sit down, sit down, good girl. There you go. Stay at my side. Mm, it's a good girl. 
Huh? No, I don't want you to eat those frogs. No, there's no need to have this. You don't need to bother the frog. Don't bother the frog, Dasha. Don't let me tell you again. Sit down. Sit down. There. All right. Well, this is exciting for Dasha because, you know, dogs like me are nocturnal creatures. But it's good to be here right now. I suppose I could darken the lights of the house and see even better, but it's pretty nice, my view. Dasha, I told you to leave the frog. Hey, leave the frog alone. We have weird frogs here. I think they're attracted to the light. Now you have to be friends with the frog. The frogs don't mean to hurt you. If we get a lot of frogs, I'm thinking, uh-oh, a plague. Well, I don't need to look at the firmament to look through because I can see there's been times where I've been able to see through the ceiling and into the infinite stars beyond as if I'm traveling many light years from the earth. And the ability to do that at my will is something that has puzzled me for many years because I wonder why I can do that if... I can't remember, you know, I mean, it's it's a very frustrating. Oh, there's a beautiful one there. That one seemed to have a trail of smoke, you know. So it's interesting when they have smoke and they're burning up in the Earth's atmosphere, but it, it's interesting, you know, or they're going through and there's smoke and then they go out again. Uh, do they go at a curve? No, they go straight. They don't curve. They go straight. Do they go in and out? Oh, that might, you know. I'm not here to really, I just saw a comedy about Buzz Aldrin and I thought, you know, it also had Alex Jones in it and the two of them going on about this obelisk on Phobos and then some footage of uh, Jan Harlan who was, um, Jan Harlan was the, the production manager for Stanley Kubrick and Stanley Kubrick's wife and the whole thing with the moon and, and the whole idea of uh, Buzz Aldrin slip up and saying, well, the, the, the the Phobos moon is very close to the Earth. A lot closer than the moon is. So it's easier to get to. And we already have our staff in place, right? The Masons are there. <laughs> so we have the, the obelisk, which also represents Luciferianism in 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 with with Kubrick, because Kubrick was in the club, obviously they you know, he was their genius, but then he rebelled. And then, um, you know what happened when he rebelled. And how did he rebel? Uh, because they don't want the beans spilled about the, um, you know, in the eyes wide shut. And, and whether it was through remote, you know, I mean, triggering a heart attack from a remote satellite. I mean, who knows, you know, or witchcraft, whatever. He, he died at 70. He died at 70 after what was a brilliant movie, but it was hacked up by Tom Cruise and um, Steven Spielberg, who, you know, who, and then denounced by this guy that was a cinematographer for me at one point, and who was a Kubrick fanatic. I mean, we always had these discussions about Kubrick, but then not on that one. He was actually angry, personally angry at Kubrick. And I'm like, why are you angry? It's like, yeah, because he's harboring the deep, dark secret, because he was one of them. Well, he gave up cinematography, and then he became a an, a chosen artiste in L.A., and he sort of went, kind of, I think he sort of, you know, he, he kind of, I, I don't even want to, I don't want to get into criticizing anyone, but I, I'm just, you know, you have to understand most people that listen to this podcast, you know, from the beginning, you didn't, you were not aware about the vast influence, including in space, of these uh, obelisks and the Egyptians. Now, no, Dasha, I told you to stay away from the frog. Now, leave the frog alone. I know, I, I, I can't keep telling you over and over again. Leave the frog alone. Okay.
Now you be good. Come on. We have the smell of the purple say, the Russian sage here. It grows and people pay a fortune for this at the uh, nursery. It grows wild here. It's just completely, I'm surrounded in Russian sage. It is wonderful. But here I'm looking and I haven't had a meter in a while. And uh, Dasha keeps getting interested in the frogs. We have a weird frog here. It's like a desert frog. And they come around because we have some lights here. And and, uh, and I've told her to to to, to, to like, <laughs> just to sit there and be... And she's being you know, fantastic for a... Uh, she's almost 11 months. She'll be... She's 11 months is how old Dasha is. And she'll be one year in September. And she's huge. But she still hasn't quite grown into those ears yet. And um, anyway, here goes another one. Yeah, they fly straight. They don't go in a, in a curve. So I look at the, the stars and I think, is it possible that instead of the Earth rotating, the stars are moving in a kind of a loop? And somehow we are set in, you know, almost like an artificial um, cylinder, like a flat cylinder. We're set in that and things meaning that, well, let's go back to Genesis, meaning that when God created the earth, it was a very special thing. And, and yet we might call it artificial. Right, not a natural thing, but something almost arbitrary or artificial that the Lord created in the midst of the heavenlies, which are not created in the same way, or there could be a difference, but they, they seem to go around, or these objects and these lights, or the light that we see, seems to be moving. And it's just a very interesting, uh, uh, another perspective. I mean, back in the time of the Egyptians, of course, um, they felt that that was the case. And if we go back to the early believers in, the, in Scripture, in the Bible, that was the case. And it, it, I just have to get back to this competition between, you know, God and Satan, or Satan with God, and and the followers of Satan, which believe that Satan's real job here, if you like, Lucifer's job, is to bring humanity into enlightenment, to take stewardship and control over all that is surveyed. God was the prime mover, the beginning of all, the, the but but not the conscious creator. It takes man to consciously finish the work of our Lord, which, of course, is blasphemy. But it is the very creed by which runs the New World Order, the government of the United States, the government of the Vatican, the government of Israel, the government of the UN, the government of, of the globalists, the government of all of Europe, the government of the UK, of the first world leaders are all united in this belief. And when I say all, I mean all at the top of the chain. They believe that they are here and, and they also have the technology to fly around and do whatever. I mean, there's obviously evidence in other places. Now, Buzz Aldrin, because of the way that he lies, it's so funny seeing this idiot George Norrie talk to him and, well, did you see anything up there, Buzz? You know, and they're both they're both kind of like nodding and winking at each other, and it's and 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 Alex Jones is not answer asking the tough questions either, and and you know, or or when well, the moon's much you know, Phobos is a lot closer uh, to the Earth than uh, the moon. We seem to see a UFO out there that's following us. It's about 6,000 miles away that uh, uh, is what, um, you know, ground control says, Houston is saying. Oh, 
so it's not a UFO. It seems to be following us, but really it's it's Phobos, 6,000 miles away on the way to the moon. Um, if you do the math, technically, Mars should be, well, another, what, another... Uh, you know, 10 times further than the moon, 100 times further, whatever. It, it's, 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 it's not 6,000 miles, you know, over here, you know, to out my window here. So, you know, you're getting this uh, object being filmed in space, and how can they be filming out the window um, the moon of Mars? You know, see, I mean, there's things like that. And so long as there are things like that, I will not be satisfied with my amnesia. So let me tell my friend, I'm sorry. I know that you have integrity, but there is something wrong with our science, and I will never rest until I, w and I ask you to solve it. You solve it. You're a scientist. You solve it for me. But never, ever think that what you've been educated with. Don't ever think for a minute that these people that are all connected and they have ancient connections with Mars, I know, and out there. Don't ever think that they, they wouldn't lie. Now, the, the question is, well, why would they lie and go to such lengths to have such elaborate lies about physics, the cosmos, the telescope footage. Why would they lie about all that? And then there is an answer. Why would they deceive? Why the better question? And and you don't have to you know believe or not believe about Hubble and this and that. Let's just set all that aside. Because I'm 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 not really even interested in 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 calling them liars, or NASA liars or whatever. I'm not interested. NASA was set up by Satanists, though. I mean, and why would they have a mass deception? It's because they're in the business of harvesting souls. And somehow this ignorance keeps people from wondering about ourselves, our ancient selves. Keeps us from wondering about our memories. Keeps us from wondering about this I told you this recycling job it keeps us from wondering about what kind of things that people there are on the moon and who are these other people that rule over us. They're not on Earth. And then, of course, there's this idea of an alien invasion at some point that kind of comes and goes. But it all has to do, I, I believe, with this worship of the beast, that the whole world will wonder after the beast and worship the alien. You know, something to that effect. Well, they're certainly not going to worship Obama. I mean, he's the guy that starts off saying there's 59 states. I mean, the funny, the embarrassing thing about him is that he's, without a script, he's kind of an idiot. He's sort of, you know, I mean, I know that Michael Savage and other people are calling him smart. He's not smart. He's, he's a, you know, puppet. And that's the truth. He's... You know, he's basically told what to do, and then he want, they tell him to do his song and dance to sell it to the American people or whoever's going to listen to him, which not many people here, maybe 25% of the people listen to him. I, I, I turn him off because I know he's a fool. You know, if I want the real story, I, I'm more interested in I can get it without listening to him. I'm sorry for him. It must be a very... You know, I understand the money is a very powerful thing and being the ruler of the world, but he isn't the ruler of the world. That's, that's the point. Why would they put a fake ruler of the world and have fake presidents? Why would they do that to us? I don't know why this is all clear. This is all happening as I'm looking at the firmament, watching the meteors go by. And... Uh, We need answers, Lord, and the Lord answered me by taking me to Isaiah 14, which says that the rulership and the bondage that we've been in is about to be overturned. And then Psalm 2 focuses in on what's about to be overturned, Lord, and then the Lord says, 
it's the rulers of the earth about to quit. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have all these answers. But the idea of keeping you ignorant and stealing from you and lying to you and in other wise not you know, diseducating your children and poisoning you and torturing you and sending beams at you you know the bummed out beam is a good one to keep people miserable so that they can be more easily controlled I mean this is not life folks this is not what the Lord intended when he gave us life. I mean, maybe we were very evil at one time, and our punishment is to be here under corrupt rulership, which is really under Nephilim rule and under, if you like, um, you know, not alien, but satanic rule, which is slavery, obviously. But, you, but the, the way you do it in a really good hellish thing is you tell them they're free. You tell the people they're free. You tell them... You know, you, you, you give them all the hope and, and all this stuff. You tell them they're free. You tell them to build their castles in this world. You tell them they can win the game when it's rigged, of course. You tell them that somehow they better put their eggs in this basket and conform to what we tell you. The earth is rotating around the sun, not vice versa. And all those stars out there that you can see with the telescope, they're all doing similar things around their suns and the moons around them and the planetary bodies and everything out there is a sphere all rotating, 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 just like electrons and protons and neurons <clears throat> and all of that. You were born here and given a wonderful opportunity in the Western world <clears throat> under God to pursue happiness in whatever way that you feel is uh, that, that you decide because you were born free. People had shed blood in the United States of America for the United States of America so that you would have that freedom to speak and to live life as you feel that you should have it. Now, I don't have a lot wrong with that. I, I like the idea that uh, I'm born free and there's a, a, a declaration of independence and a bill of rights that I'm free to pursue <clears throat> my Lord, my religion, unfettered. I'm free to think my own thoughts. I'm free to speak to you on the internet as I am doing in the form of a podcast, which is a very powerful medium. In fact, it's so powerful that it's, it's mind-boggling that, that, you know, it's amazing we're allowed to have that. But we are. So there, it's not all negative, but the overarching thing is, yes, but still a prison cell. I mean, in, in general, when we think about the whole earth when we think about the cognition we have about this situation. And, but I think the answers are really still going to lie, as they, as they do here in this Bible. But the answer has to, has to lie with the Lord, God Almighty. Has to lie with Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, the Lord Creator, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Somehow this earth is important to the Lord, and so important to the top angel who defected. But by design, of course. Nothing happens and surprises God. That's the whole problem with the church. They always act like God is surprised when, well, gee, that evil that's going on over there, that's terrible. I want nothing to do with that. It's like, you know, dude, don't, don't. God has control over all things or he isn't God. So don't tell me one thing. And then lie to me. And the reason they lie is because all the churches are controlled by the same obelisk. Every last one. Whether they, I met, I see a little guy online 
he kind of looks like Jesus. He's got like a Jesus thing going on, right? And I've been watching him. You know, I'm not going to mention a name or anything because I, you know, I, but I just see a slave of this system <clears throat> trying to dupe people into thinking here's an alternative Jesus guy. I mean, nice try. I don't want to pop him. I just, <clears throat> you know, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the kind of person, you know, I give, I give a guy the benefit of the doubt, you know. I did that with all the online writers and remember all the, all the people that keep saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I gave all them a chance on my show. I just can't think of anything more pleasant than being out here looking out there. I feel close to you, Lord. I, I know. I mean, I'm here. You're laughing at me, right? Fly by in your little tin can and laugh at me sitting here, stuck here. That's why you're laughing. Hey, leave that frog alone. Now sit down there. Sit down. Be a good girl now. Huh? If you be a good girl, you said that's it. There you go. That's what I want. <laughs> She's on my feet. Okay. So, Lord, maybe it's the fact that, I mean, all I, you, you gave me Isaiah 14 to that point where the people that had us enslaved will be our servants. Ooh, a big meteor heading toward Albuquerque. It looks like it's coming down from the sky. No, I know, I know. Um, there's evidence of people have telescopes and they look out there and you see the moon and you, you know you see the you see everything. The thing that people don't seem to see though is that it's all very well traveled. <laughs> They've done a good job keeping us in the dark on that, have they not? But if we go back to um, Genesis and we take a line, they say, well, the earth is 4,000 years old and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and and yes, obviously, um, creation, now I see something akin to a UFO. Well, that certainly is strange. But the lights are blinking. There's two of them in the distance. So I know that's not a satellite. It's got to be some kind of plane, but they're flying together. And it's maybe two in the morning. Uh, if you really want to feel alive, take a chair and sit out in the dark at two in the morning and look up at the firmament. And you will feel a sense of being renewed. And you will feel... It's kind of like my way of fasting, you know. You will feel a real connection to the Lord and all I'm all I'm asking for is clarity and remembrance I you, you, is the problem father and I'm just speaking directly to when I look up and to the firmament here it's like I'm talking directly to God like he's right there so I'm saying so you you don't I'm talking to him in front of you well now there's one light blinking and that's, I don't know what they are doing. There's more than one. Now there's a bunch of them. Well, that's a very strange sighting. It's too far for these eyes to really understand. So it's just a kind of blinking lights flying around together. In a kind of a, just above the horizon. And it's probably just two cargo planes because cargo planes fly at night. Two things we see out here that are not UFOs. One is a cargo plane, and the other is the satellite. And uh, there's there's plenty of all of you know plenty of those. There's a lot of common. Ooh, that's a that one just streaked by and, and left a plume behind it. Um, you know, obviously these are coming into the atmosphere and then out. So then they smoke for a second, and then out they go. And then they're back to, you know what I mean? And they, then they stop. There's a streak there, and then it, and then it goes away. Uh, but as I looked at the firmament, I realized now that the Lord will um, hand over the answers in due time. 
but there are things that have been shielded from us, and the Lord is aware that we've been put in a state of amnesia. We've been in this kind of artificial thing called the earth. And um, it's, there's, there is no real evolution that goes on. It's, 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 it's something that science can't figure out. The other thing I, I realize is that science, based on false premises, cannot succeed. So that, um, you know, and, and then you wonder about CERN and you think, okay, the Super Hadron Collider that they're so proud of, 17 miles of velocity for a colli before a collision, all underground. And then I saw some, some video of them partying and having a band play there and all kinds of stuff. But I, uh, they wouldn't be doing that. And, you know, these are, you, you know, you call them Illuminati scientists, whatever, you know, approved of. They wouldn't be doing this unless there was something they needed to do. Obviously, what they're trying to do at this point, besides, you know, the 3D printable matter, in other words, to be able to take, you know, dark matter and fashion it into anything, clones, people, spaceships, this and, that, and then it goes back to the Vedic understanding, in the Vedas, they talk about mind ships. In other words, you make a spaceship with your mind and travel around in it. And then wars like that. And then the idea of fashioning, you don't really need dark matter in the end after all. You can do it all with your mind. And then, then the idea is you become your own creator. Anyway, that's their pursuit. That's not my pursuit. My pursuit is just to go where I'm supposed to go, to remember what I'm supposed to remember, I mean, if this is it, Lord, you want me to just be here and be ignorant, I will continue. I mean, ignorant, I'm not totally ignorant because I know you are the, 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 the focal point of all things, creator of all things. So I'm, I'm going to just hang with you and you'll tell me when you're good and ready and it's really above my pay grade. So I'm cool with that. That's okay. But you can't fault me. Now leave that frog on. I know they're, they're hopping around here. You can't fault me for wanting to know. You can't fault me for seeing um, various uh, perspectives of the earth that contradict the round earth theory and then seeing other things that confirm the round earth theory and have me living in a state of conflict. I, I can't deal with that. I could care less either way. I'm not married to the glo globular universe. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's just all malleable. If I want to think of it as uh, flat or Frisbees or whatever, I can do so. I understand that I can travel. I understand that, you know, I'm here in a 3D form, but I'm not to do those things because you put me here to have an experience here. But then my heart yearns for there. Because of course I am my father's son. Of course I'm going to eventually want to wake up. Don't you? Don't you want to know what the great destiny was? The ancient memories? The Don't you want to know? Of course we do. And of course I wait on the Lord for the knowledge because I see them trying to jimmy it out of, you know, the occult on their own and they seem to get more and more deluded and they get more and more completely insane as they go. I mean, if the Lord didn't have an iron lock hand on them, they would have nuked the planet already or maybe even found a way to, uh, you know, uh, black hole the whole universe and just take it out. That's how angry they are with God, that God would put them here. And everything they've gotten, they've had to get through all their sciences. But yeah, we see space travel going on for a long time. We see, we see things, but we don't necessarily see evolution in progress. It's a, it's a theory. Just like when they keep presenting the theory of the universe, of the cosmos, 
Remember Carl Sagan, the big push. And then they introduce us to aliens who have the key to unlock the future. And then these stupid, absolute moron women. And they're a new young batch of pretty girls. They're always pretty. Seducing, it. it's still Jezebel, seducing people into this idea of hybridizing the new race of human that will be peaceful and loving and live in concert with the earth, just like a James Cameron movie. Another. Well, the reason I would never go to New Zealand is because he's a Satanist. He's obviously a, a, a man of the obelisk. I can tell from all his work. And he goes to New Zealand where he feels comfortable, in obelisk land. Why would I want to go there or follow him anywhere? He's beholden, i.e. he's ignorant, and he'll always be ignorant until he lets that go. And then, once you let the ignorance go, I mean, once you realize you're ignorant and you're impotent, the next thing that happens is you realize you got amnesia, that you do have a destiny, that you are something, that the soul is something. But they tell us it's nothing. So, the answer is, the Lord gives us what he wants us to have or what we need. So what we know now is this. The, this was pretty big. The, the plans of the New World Order, which I told you a long time ago, there is no New World Order. Okay, Just like there, a lot of things they say are fact are not fact at all. Meteors are going now every about two seconds. Well, there's three right in a row. The fact of the matter is, folks, The rulers of the earth are to be overturned because, see, we have been their slaves. We have been in captivity. I've been told we were free. And when you get high enough up in information, in the info war or whatever, you realize, what democracy? <laughs> There's a lid on it, right? There's a, it's a, it's a, a simulacra, right? It's, it's simulacrum. It's a... It's a reality that's formed, but it was the Lord that formed it. See, that's the thing. We gotta go back to respecting the earth because the Lord formed it. We're gonna have to honor Genesis to Revelation. And we're gonna honor that the Lord wants us to know so much, but no more. Because, and here's the answer. If he were to just download the whole thing, and I've had downloads before. I had the pyramid download. I had all the mathematics and everything, and uh, I still have them somewhere. And all the symbols and the writing, the same writing you see on these UFOs, blah, 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 that I was also given directly. I'm not saying it was a healthy download. This was in the 90s. That led to the information of the moon, the Soul Recycling Center, and the council that rules the earth from the moon in some kind of crystal city thing. And yes, they're all human looking. They don't look like bugs or lizards or whatever. And um, that's why when we give Obama too much credence, you see, the problem is then you're believing in the, the paradigm they want you to believe in. You know, the President of the United States has power. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there is, the United States is, is, a, is a corporate entity. <laughs> <laughs> they already have the New World Order, that's my point. You know, this idea of countries or not countries, it's almost arbitrary. It's, you know, six of one, half dozen the other. Who, you know, that's not the focus. That shouldn't be our focus, and I'll tell you why. Our focus has to be on the Lord. I mean, focus in, in this sense. We want our people to be prosperous and happy, sure. I'd like to believe that the Lord has the final say. For example, right now, the biggest story is the fact that um, Russia and NATO are going at it in their exercises they're both saying they're, <clears throat> I mean, NATO is saying not Russia, but they're saying they're in a hot war right now with Russia. They just need people to believe them. <laughs> they need to press to put it more toward the front page, darn it. I said we're in a hot war. What do you think of that? Wah, wah. Hey, we're in a hot war. What do you think of that? We're Russia, huh? Yeah, it's World War Three, and no one's paying attention. Wah, wah. <laughs> 
It's another World War Three. No, it's vegan. You can't just have World War Three. I proclaim it. We're supposed to. Albert Pike said yes. And he was the man of the obelisk. That's why he's in Washington, D.C. You know, our leader. Pike. You know, like Star Trek. What happened to Pike? Remember? Pike. I was wondering about people with the last name of Pike. There's Pike's Peak in Colorado. There's the actress, Rosamund Pike. You know, and she sort of scares me when I see her. But not from because of her, because of something else. Oh, not a fear like, oh my God, I'm going to run away. I mean, you know, there's just not, not much we can do. You know, it's, it's, life here is very, 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 very much on a, on a little thread. Dasha's all wandering around sniffing things and well there's one, two, three, four, five and there's the Pleiades and there's the meteors and there's the answer the Lord gave us which is I'm here in the in heaven right up there and I'm laughing as I'm looking down to, to this, the earth. And I'm laughing at the rulers who, because they're at war with me, attack my children. The old ancient attack. You know, they think they can get away with their sacrifices to their God through abortion. But I sit here and I laugh at that. And I see what they do. And I know that you people, I know you out there, you don't want anything to do with it. And you want it stopped. I know you know it's wrong. Something in your soul tells you it's wrong. And you know it's wrong because you fear me the Lord. And because you fear me, you are intact as a soul. And so things that are right and things that are wrong, you yourselves know. I don't have to tell you that aborting babies, murdering babies is wrong. You already know that. And so those of you of good conscience, who fear the Lord will be satisfied. Your work and your dedication will be paid off now. The very thing they believe is going to happen, the programming. Well, what's the programming, Lord? Well, you know what the programming is. That certain events are going to take place upon the earth. Great wars and great death. Great destruction. And then I will come and set it straight, but not before the great tribulation, the unleashing of Apollyon, the beast, upon the earth and the powers therein and the aliens and the fake raptures and the rest of it. And then, after most of mankind is gone, I mean two-thirds, at least, depending on how you do the math of the book of Revelation, and a third of the sea creatures. People are saying that's already happened now. But eventually, after great trauma to you people, and of course, the ones who are left will really be the losers because they'll, they'll wish for death because things will be so hard here. But no worries, humans. We all look from heaven and we see your plight, and we're cheering you on to finish the story. Because God will make it all right in the end. And the end is coming right up. It's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. And all these Illuminati people, these people of the obelisk, they're all running the churches. See, they run the story and the narrative of the 70 weeks of Daniel and the this and that and all this, 
you know, scholarship, the Bible, the inerrant word, and all that, because they need it as a blueprint to do maximum trauma and maximum sacrifice and maximum murder so they can, and maximum destroying of souls and maximum trading of souls so they can, and maximum lavishing themselves with, with all things of gold and wealth and power. And then they will fulfill the destiny, God's word. They don't need to have their own word. They're just itching to get the kickoff with the opening of the seven seals. And then the seven times three uh, judgment by the time those vials and bowls and, and the rest of it, all that are, are opened. Humanity will be in very so traumatized we will be so powerful then that we won't need humanity anymore and we go off to the stars and we are back as the rulers as we should be i'm getting meteors every two seconds now my gosh i just pulled up for the greatest show on earth thank you lord thank you for showing me something up there i was feeling pretty lonely like you know, that nobody up there likes me anymore. You certainly have been strangers. I know the angels work behind the scenes, and so you never they never really get the appreciation that they're due. But still, come on. I mean, this is like a total blackout for me. And I will still keep looking up. But anyway, back to our story. So they will smite the earth <laughs> and destroy so many people that it's just a hellhole. And then when Armageddon comes, they'll be ready this time. That's why they get that super collider going because they're going to just like eviscerate Jesus and the saints and all that are coming in all dimensions, maybe even just eviscerate the entire world with a black hole. So God, <laughs> we finally got a weapon against God now. <laughs> yeah, he thinks we're just going to do a scorched earth. We're just going to get rid of the whole thing. And God's precious creation will transmogrify every cell. In other words, we will alter and diminish into another species, the human, and everything else. We'll change the genome of plant, of human, of everything. We'll re-terraform the earth. We'll do whatever we want. And you'll have nothing to say about it, Father. Nothing to say about it at all, Yahweh, Almighty. And then they'll say, you know, the secret to Yahweh is he's really Satan. What people don't realize is we have the whole world worshiping Satan. Calling him. Not knowing they're worshiping Saturn. They're worshiping Kronos. They're worshiping time and space. They're worshiping their own destruction. <laughs> and then the Lord says, you see, they're laughing, but it is I who have the last laugh. It is I who laugh at them because I will pull the plug right now. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to say, you're a liar because you're supposed to bring about the end right now. Oh, you see, the end is, an, is, a, is a holographic thing. It's... It's always here. I don't understand. Well, the complete story takes place in another dimension, not in linear time. Oh. So, in other words, what you're telling me, it's always complete. It's always beginning. It's always Genesis. It's always the struggle. It's always the end at all times. That's correct. See, that's the thing they can never get around. They need linear time to do all their nefarious deeds. In the end of the day, they're too insane to enjoy them. The fruits of their labors, they never get to enjoy because they go psychotic. They go mad. Hence, the judgment is built in. Their end is every generation. They fail every generation. And what they're going to do this time is there is an end of sorts in that souls are constantly leaving out of their grasp and coming home. So they can't put a lock-tight iron 
curtain over it all, and with surveillance go ahead and block everything and everyone from advancing in knowledge. They will make man worship the earth and want to be on the earth and want to win in earth terms. And as these meteors fall and fly, I should say, it looks like man has no control. No control at all in the end because you see all of these people of the obelisk, they are all 100% controlled ultimately by the Lord, even their thoughts, even their madness. See, the the cardinal error is the decision to go to that other side. The cardinal error is made the moment that one decides, okay, I'm with you, and they choose sign. From that point forward, of course, they're no longer running a race. They're no longer the Lord's own. They sometimes call themselves the Grateful Dead. But, you know, they're accurate. It, as my ex-wife used to call it, well, they've, they've had their funeral now. In other words, they're, they've had their initiation. They've, they, they call it a funeral. They know what it means. They know that they're going to go to hell. They know that they're in eternal uh, rebellion against God. They know that they're going to keep the secret unto death. They know that they, that they are basically in a war with God, but they feel that this time they're going to win. And if not that, they're going to win to be rulers of the earth because they know that's what it takes to be a ruler of the earth. So they're aware of all the pros and cons when they make that decision. Of course, they do it at the, at the point of a gun because their parents won't let them make any other decision because the parents want them to succeed in this world and they don't want them to be the rabble in somewhere like Calcutta or some poor place where, where poverty and malnutrition and everything else is going on. So they force their children and they sell them out before they even know what's going on. When the children get to be about 13 or 14, they go, thank you very much. I am so glad because you see, I'm one of those rulers now. The world is my oyster. I walk around with ownership of this world. And of course, you see, that is a lie. They have that sense of confidence. And they have the backing of the whole world, the whole, everybody else who's done the same thing. So as a, as a collective, they are successful, but only as a collective. And when they ask them, well, who's running the show here? They say, we don't know. But, you know, I'd rather live the good life than the, than the struggling life. By the way, you need to bow down to me. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what my ranking is? Show a little respect. Or I'll put you out of your misery. And I'll get away with it. Oh, I know you will. I know you will. I know you Believe you have those powers to smite whoever you will. Oh, I'm seeing hundreds and... I mean, this is ridiculous how many meteors I'm seeing now. It's almost as if the, the dialogue we're having is very much approved of by the angels and the Lord. He likes... I'm, I'm sort of channeling all these different voices. <laughs> he loves it. Well... I just want you all to be straight on what's going on. <coughs> My goodness, Dasha, open the door by yourself. That's a good girl, but I'm going to shut the door, Dasha. Well, we've seen enough meteors. Mr. Eli will stay out there and guard. And I will return once more. Well, it's just one of those strange nights that I would... Thankfully, I get to share with you, and then I will catch some more Z's. I will... Well, you think you're going to be fed something. 
you think you're going to get a little treat at 2.30 a.m., don't you? Hmm? Were we not? We're dogs. We're nocturnal. I can't do it right now, Mustasha. I'm so sorry. You're just going to have to. You're just going to have to be. I'm glad you ride shotgun with me. She rides shotgun with me whenever I do. It's hilarious. I don't know if that trend will continue because Mr. Eli is a lot more independent. Anyway, did you approve of our little talk? Did that help set you astray? Did that give you confidence to know that you're on the right course? Did you get the best of me? Meaning, did you get my best? It's important to me that you feel that you get my... It's at this hour. I'm and sitting in front of the firmament. Well, I trust myself. You see, I wouldn't be asking questions about the earth and the stars and the things out there and the moon unless I had somehow been there. But I can't remember. It's just, it's just the weirdest thing. I, I, you know, I feel like I've had the, uh, this whole other life somewhere and something, and, but it's blocked. And I'm, I'm willing to say, okay, Lord, because I, I love the Lord. I know that he will not... Oh, oh. oh <laughs> that just moved on its own. I'm trying to have an espresso. I'm, I'm horrified at how physics is being violated before my very eyes. I'm being half facetious. Of course, it was my fault. Well, I wouldn't ask questions if I didn't expect one day to get an answer. And if the answer is, it's all what you think it is, everything is just round spheres in all creation, spinning around each other. Uh, whether it be planets or neurons and protons and the rest of it, and neutrinos and, and all the particles. I mean, you know, if they're all the same, fine. But I know something about the Earth. I know this Earth is shielded from the rest of reality. I know that because I'm shielded from reality. And I guess the Lord wants us to go through this I prove ourselves worthy. And I think, I guess, when you're at Navy SEAL training, your head better be in that or you're going to have to ring the bell and go home. So the bottom line is, my head's got to be in this. Okay, so do I buy in? I was created here to serve the Lord, to find the truth, which I did. I did, I found the truth. No, it's not that Yahweh is Satan. That is their truth. And my Lord d d isn't Saturn. He created Saturn and along with everything else. But you see, the Saturn connection is what tethers the Satanists, the obelisk people, it tethers them to all to this physical plane. They are indeed rulers of it, and they want us to know that. At the same time, they want us to believe we're free, much like cattle is told to believe it's free, never told about the slaughterhouse to come. But indeed, humans need to know. All you humans out there, are you human? Then you need to know. You're on your way to the slaughterhouse. What's being harvested? Your souls. Why is that important? Because that's what feeds their machines. That's what keeps them in power. Nope. See, if they smite all the people of the earth in a mass extinction event, guess what? They die from lack of power. The light bulb goes out. You see, when you make that decision to serve them, to serve the beast, you, your light goes out. You must feed on the collective 
and then learn to feed on souls where the light bulb is on and like you go feed on them. That's the only way you keep your artificial, non-reflecting, refracting light, light like the UFOs. Notice how they never, the light never beams out. It's all contained. That's them. That's them. I've seen them after doing their rituals and they have this light like a sheen on them. And, um, you know, like a halo. And it's funny because you can put your hand right up to them and it, nothing comes out. It's, it's a glow, but it doesn't, it, it's not the kind of light that reflects. And you have to have eyes to see, to see this. But most people, you, like you look out there, you don't see anything like I see. You have to kind of train yourself to see what's out there because just like the uh, Indians when the ships came on the sea on the west coast, I think it was the Chumash Indians, I'm not sure exactly what tribes, but they couldn't see the boats because they weren't trained to see it. So you see, it's all in plain sight, but you just can't see it. If you realize it's in plain sight, but you can't see it, that's the first step toward being able to see but then that would be the Lord's timing for your waking up. Because most people, if they woke up here, would be freaked out. And they wouldn't run the race anymore, would they? They would just want to go home. And they would quit playing in their dramas. You see, they're all actors here, playing in their dramas. They believe it's real. They don't think it's a simulacrum. They think it's real. And so, it's just like the pilot that's flying the test... You know, the training thing, it, it, it's, it's very real, the experience, right? It's virtual reality at its best, pretty much. So you're in there, and then the mistake is you start believing that your test flyer that's in a contained room and you're not flying at all, you start believing that's real, you really are flying a plane. And you're not, it's a simulation. It's a simulated flight, but you're not flying anything. Okay, so that is the mistake that humanity has made. They believe they're really flying the plane. But then I look to the Lord respectfully and I say, Lord, but isn't that what you want them to believe? That this is it and this is real and this... So they will just live unconscious or live without being sub subconscious as if it's real rather than acting. Whereas the honchos know better being that they're the smart Luciferians. And so they act like, <laughs> look at them all, they actually think this is real. You know, you tell them the same lie and not long enough, and they, look, they believe it. They believe that uh, Russia is starting a war with the United States. <laughs> what else can we repeat? How else can we control them? What else can we get them to believe? Well, we can get them to uh, think that good is bad and bad is good. We can get them to reject God and want to kill anyone who wants it. We can do lots of things with them. Their minds are ours. It's all about mind, folks, I told you. In Luciferianism, it's not about being, it's about mind. From the mind comes all things, all control. Like I told you, they don't need to build UFOs, of course. Even in the Vedas, they talk about mind ships from the mind. Sorcery from the mind. In China right now, they're training the military to control robots with their minds. Yes, and it's working. From mind comes total control of everything you survey. The only problem is you have competing interests and factions. Everyone wants to rule the world. So they fight each other, and when they do, you get a break. Yes, you and I get a break. Now what are we gonna do about it? Well, number one, serve the Lord, which means love God, and I love God enough to say, okay, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna just be here. I'm not gonna ask any questions more tonight. I'm just gonna let it be. Love God, love one another. Love one another means not only to not hold a grudge, 
but to, you know, to be here as a servant, to be Christ-like, you know, recognizing, and how do you be a good servant? Well, there's no servant who buys into this simulacrum that's a decent servant. He's not going to be. He's going to want to be a ruler of his own destiny. A servant understands that the Lord's will be done. And there ain't no sense in fighting it because it's done anyway. So you might as well, through your knowledge, you become the servant. And when you're the servant, you say, okay, Lord, where does thou want me? Not what do I think I should do to be of service, but where does the Lord want me to serve? Because I'm the ultimate servant to him, not to man. When Jesus Christ came here, there's a big mistake. People think, well, he came here to serve humanity. No, he did not. Like the rest of us, it all serves the Lord for his pleasure. And the Lord is no respect to a person. He served the Lord. He wanted to go on. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he doubted. His human part was reacting, and he was, really, do I have to go through, right? Yeah? But you see, the Lord's will be done, and the Lord had the perfect plan. The Lord's will be done, not Jesus' will. And of course, the identity of Jesus is the Lord, ultimately, but I mean, in this particular time-space continuum, in this ministry and sacrifice of the Lord for the purpose of saving humanity, God's only begotten Son had to be sacrificed. There was going to be no question. The ultimate thing that Jesus did in serving, finally, in a great service to the Lord, and hence to humanity, he willingly went without blame, complaint, as a lamb to the slaughter, on false pretenses and with false witness. How many of you had had false witness How many of you have rejoiced when false witness was born? How many of you who were silent and did not answer the false accusations? No, you did. Of course you did. But to truly be Christ-like, you would be keeping your mouth shut. Let them say you're false. I mean, basically, I saw when they wanted to get rid of me, when I finally saw through the people I was interviewing, and I saw what their game really was. They wanted to cover that up, so they sent their minions out to... They're people of the obelisk, but they have ever... They got you all fooled. It's okay. Look, I look far and wide. You know, I've been watching this little... this little uh, Jesus-looking guy, and I'm watching, and I'm thinking... It all sounds good, but there's just one problem. The information that people really need to know, how to survive in this world. That that little part that Jesus taught about being wise as serpent, but gentle as a dove, does not mean just hail Jesus, 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 and everything just clears up. So it's like that, right? I, I brought up a few things about the suffering of Jesus' servants. So, you know, I sent it just in a note about what we go through. You know, we struggle with sin. We, we come back. We fall down. We get up. We, anyway, just to, about the whole satanic thing, you know. He got so mad. He said, he just got so mad. I'm like, I, I, you know, he said, I thought you were, where's the good news, he said. Aren't you going to bring me the good news? And uh, I, <laughs> yeah, the red flag, right? I know. Well, from that point forward, I understood what was going on. And, you know, people need that. I mean, they need a preacher guy to be being there with his Bible and going line and verse about it. How, you know, through faith, you know, you can overcome all your, you know, your checkbook bouncing and you're not able to pay the bills. You know, it's like like that, focusing on those 
very practical issues through prayer and through, through faith. So that's a good service. That's a good part. But one wonders about the great glaring omission about this world we're in. Well, the Bible also teaches that, does it not? Jesus also admonishes us to understand those things. So we understand why Jesus, not just having faith in Jesus. And I saw him say something like, well, people don't believe in heaven or hell, they don't believe in anything. He's like, yes, I can't believe in heaven or hell unless the Lord shows me. You don't want me to just take it on your word, do you, brother? You said it, so I believe it, you're my God? No, I have to understand. God must speak to me and to my heart. Not just you telling me. But so, maybe it's ignorance, or maybe it's willful omission. But when I see people preaching on and on, especially, you know, he'll read a couple verses and talk for 20 minutes, a couple more verses and talk for 20 minutes, which, you know, I don't really quibble with that. But it just, it's got to go further than just, okay, here I am, and I'm going to have to get through this day and I somehow got to struggle with this, these issues, and I got to, I'm, I'm just, it's like, that, are we supposed to have our entire focus on these little, like, whether I can go to the bathroom, or I hope I don't have a lustful moment, or, gee, I don't want to, you know, all the eating too much, or drinking too much, or taking prescription drugs, whatever it is. My God, people, I mean, that's all going on, I'm sure with people, all those, you can enumerate them to hundreds and thousands of little sins, but is that all you want to think about, folks? I thank God when, I have, when I'm free from sin so I can do one of these talks because I don't want to focus on what my flesh wants or doesn't want. I'd like to be free of it for a while so we can share the real gospel, which is the great news of eternal life, but, but also vision. With eternal life comes vision, comes comfort and peace because of no death, comes the understanding. You would then ask the question, Lord, is this a simulacrum? Is this a simulated reality, Lord, like a, like a flying machine? Is it? Father, I want to know. If it's your will that we be in that machine, fine. But is that what this is? Because it's cordoned off from the rest of everything else. That I know. And no man upon this earth can counter that statement unless he's a liar. No man can prove that this is like real reality. No man. The only thing I know about this is that we must be saved by Jesus Christ to escape this. So what is this? Now that's what a child of God should be asking the Lord like a child five years old should be going to the firmament and saying, Father, what is this? But no, through diseducation and lies in the church, that child never matures to the point of asking the Father what anything is. They just take the reality that's been dished out to them in school for granted. And no further questions come forth. The Lord loves questions. When he says be as little children, that's what we're being when we sit there looking up at the firmament and we ask him questions. We are being as little children. And that, my Father, what is this? That's a child asking the, the big father, the wise, the one that knows everything, what is this? I'm only asking because in my heart, I'm supposed to. I left a note for myself that when I come back this way again, I'll ask that question. So here I am, wanting to go to my maker and say, what is this? It's not good enough to say, well, it's in your Bible. Because there's a million different interpretations. Even with the Bible, I look up from my scripture and I say, Lord, what is this? I must know because you made me to know. You knew I would ask this question today because you made me. So here I am. 
And I know you won't just give me a false answer or no answer. Your answer was, the rulers of this earth are today overturned. Well, that's pretty big. Unless the earth is a simulacrum, a simulated reality. Then it's a matter of pushing a button. Okay, the rulers are, oh, there it is, overturned. The people get to go free. Okay, here you go. Button pushed. Done. Anything else? Well, beyond that, Lord, I didn't ask that question, but that's what your response was. Isaiah 14 and Psalm 2, that was your response. You know, the, those who are in captivity are set free. Those who were the rulers are now the servants. And to put it in the parlance of Jesus in the New Testament, that which is low will be brought high, but that which is high will be brought low. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Is that what you're telling me, Lord? This, this is what we're seeing. Yes. But wait a second now. We need these people to take over and get this big war and get this pain and suffering going. Boy, I tell you. We need this really tor terrible, everything bad all the time where people are so traumatized when you kill them, they don't know what their name is anymore. <laughs> yeah, down, show them, Lord. That's right. Whip them to death. Because <laughs> they're so rebellious because they, they saw that there were charlatans in the church, so they turned away naturally. And then you whipped them to death because they didn't believe the charlatan, the guy that was scamming them for money, the guy who was lying to them. They naturally said, well, this must be bogus. Now they're really going to get hurt. Right, Lord? Now they're really going to get it. They're really going to be sorry now. I'll tell you that. They were supposed to believe the charlatan. They were supposed to believe the fake churches. They were supposed to believe all the perverted pastors. They were supposed to believe all the Satanists running the religions. And now they've seen through it. And so they wanted to break away. Now the big punishment from Yahweh can begin. Does that make sense to you people? Do you agree that people breaking away from the church of Jesus because of all the fakeness and just through common sense not wanting their children to be affected by these perverts and stuff you know that there must be an alternative are they wrong in looking and being a little bit upset with the atrocities the church has made in the name of Jesus with wars with the Pope now trying to take over the world and, and trying to make it a world of uh, a communist state. Uh, are we to believe? Are we not to break away from the Catholic Church when we see that? Of course we are, or we would not be human while you made us. But now to roll out the big punishment thing, to roll out that big punishment, that big giant suffering thing they're going to get now, you see, that just isn't the God I serve. No, you see, he wants to reach out to those people that left the Catholic Church, you know. Because they did so correctly when they saw fakery and lies and corruption. They said, I don't want my children subjected to this or myself. I must pioneer out and find another way. Am I to be punished for that, Lord? No, son, and all the rest of you. You are not to be punished for that, no. No. That would be a psychopath. That would be insane. That would be absurd. Okay? Do you now feel that you've got it? Understand? Okay. I don't know what's gotten into me. Uh, but that's... I don't know. That, that was a... Oh, that blew my mind. Wow. Okay. I'll see you next time. God bless you, each and every one of you. And I mean, I don't say that idly. I mean that.